Hello everyone, it's Joe and today I want to talk to you about clones and uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a few different things. I want to talk first about the ethics of it, uh, then I want to talk to you about the kind of different ways I categorize clones, and then I'm going to round it up by talking about some of the different houses and uh, some of their strong suits. So um, thank you for joining me. <laughs> So to begin talking about the ethics about clones, I think it's it's too broad to say that it is or is not uh, an acceptable thing. I don't think that you can just blanket say that it's stealing art. On the other hand, I think there are instances where you can say that's exactly what it's doing. So I think you kind of have to take them in a case by case basis. And I also think it depends on your actions as the user uh, in, in terms of if it's uh, ethical or not. So I'm going to cover a little bit of that in, in the upcoming discussion. Uh, but that's basically the outline is just to say, I don't think there's anything wrong with clones. If you buy clones, more power to you. One thing that I do appreciate about the clones is they are going to put pressure on the houses to either drop their prices, uh, create something new. Well, see, this is one of the problem with clones is it could theoretically hinder uh, creativity if, if uh, you work for years on creating something and then it's just cloned uh, the following year, it disincentivizes the creativity. On the other hand, um, if you are creating something that is so priced beyond what most people can buy, and someone is swooping in and stealing uh, market share that was never going to be part of your pie anyway, is it a problem? I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Obviously, everyone makes these so that they can make money. Uh, no one is making clones or even fragrances out of the goodness of their heart. There may be people that are doing it as art, but they're still trying to monetize it. So um, it's no, one, no one's motives here are pure. Uh, except for the people who make the stuff and then don't share it with anyone. They just keep it for themselves or just share it, you know, with individuals. But if you're selling this, you're monetizing it. Your primary motivation has to be that. So getting that out of the way, the first group of uh, clones that I, I uh, want to talk about are things that I think of as good faith attempts. These are fragrances that are obviously saving money but they're doing it in such a way where they're trying to uh, keep the quality decent, get a very close approximation to the fragrance, and I feel like they're kind of honest about it. Um, they don't try and hide the fact that they are a clone, and they don't they don't present themselves in such a way that they, they are going to be promising to be a 100% accurate clone. I think that's the first group that I would break those up into. And I'll talk about those when I get to uh, fragrances in a little while, which ones I think they are. Another group is improvements or twists. I think there are a lot of situations where uh, a house may find a fragrance and they go, well, we want to replicate this, but there's something that the perfumer thinks they can do to improve, it, improve upon it, uh, do some slight variation that they think would enhance the fragrance. And so I think those are pretty interesting as well. I think if you're gonna take someone's art and kind of remix it, yeah, that's, that's creative and that's unique and I think that counts. The third one are kind of the boring, uninspired money grabs. Um, I think of these more often as the, uh, the designer clones. I just, I, I kind of don't understand why you are cloning a $80 bottle of, of uh, fragrance for $40. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. The, the, I think the value that uh, clone houses bring to the, the table, they bring us uh, DNA further out of our economic reach. So I think easy money grabs or fragrances that um, present themselves as being one-to-one -one with a fragrance and then turns out they aren't, the quality isn't good. I'll talk about this too, but if your bottle matches the thing that you're cloning, but the quality isn't there, uh, I give you double marks against. If you have a, a fragrance that has a unique name and a unique presentation and the fragrance isn't one-to-one, -one, I give you a little bit more grace. If you are trying to copy every aspect of it and then the juice is not a one-to-one, -one, I have extra animus towards you. So um, I'm going to talk about those. So to start off um, talking about specific brands, I think one thing I want to point out is that there's no brand that is a 100% success rate. 
Um, I think they all have hits or misses. I think some have more successful lines than others, uh, but they all have lots of volume. It takes a little bit of sussing out to figure out the good and the bad. So first up, I want to talk about our moth. And our moth is one of those ones where it is going to be really hit or miss. Uh, I happen to have more hits than misses, I feel like, with them. I think that's also because I've been steered well and have purchased some of their better hits. The reason I want to talk about our moth specifically is because I feel like with one of their lines in particular, it's more hits than misses. I also think that they do something respectable in that, and that's the uh, Club de Nuit Intense line. And first up, I'll talk about this one, which is very well known. It's Club de Nuit Intense Man Limited Edition, and this is a clone of Creed's Aventus. I chalk this up as a good faith effort, and not only that, I have a, um, a set of Creed, I, I think actually kind of in the same vein. I'll talk about Milestone as well, which is a clone of M Millicene Imperial. I have Creed's Discovery set, so I've done side-by-sides with these, and granted, I've only been doing this in depth for, let's say, a little over a year, year and a half at this point, so take everything I say as an untrained nose, but to my untrained nose, these both smell higher quality than what I, I smell in the Creed Discovery set. Um, that's going to out me as maybe uneducated, but the point is, if you don't no fragrances, then something that costs $50 or $60 is coming across is the same as something that costs $300. That's hard. That's hard for me to justify spending $300. And the reason I chose these two in particular is because if you look online and the way that people talk about a lot of them, uh, these two seem to be rep replicating older versions of Creed's fragrances uh, when they were less watered down, when they were a little bit stronger. and. Um, in the case of Creed in particular, it's hard for me to feel bad because they apparently have so much variation between batches. There are entire companies that are devoted to cloning different batches from Creed. It's crazy. Like, if your product is that inconsistent, I don't blame someone like Armoff coming through and saying, here, we'll give you consistently something that is like the older formulations that you really enjoyed. I really like Armoff a lot for that. I still kind of, you know, I do investigating and not all of them work out, but another one that was more recent of theirs that is less talked about is Imperial. This is a clone of Delina by Parfums de Marly. Uh, it's a clone of the fragrance my wife wore at our reception because she had a, a sample of uh, Delina. And so it's a special fragrance for me, but my wife doesn't really like fragrances that much. So getting her to wear fragrances is a very rare event. Uh, she also just doesn't really have the appreciation for it that I do, but this is an absolutely gorgeous version of that scent. It's a little bit more uh, creamy, maybe a little bit more vanilla, but absolutely stunning and beautiful. And so, you know, if we're having a date night or something like that and she wants to randomly wear something, we've got this, which is special because it's something that's unique to us. I appreciate that our moth made something here that is like great quality. The other thing about all of these fragrances, uh, in my experience, the Club de Nuit line, they're all very strong performers. How am I supposed to be upset at a quality product that is by many metrics exceeding the original that it is duplicating? I feel like at that point, that, that's a suggestion to Creed that they need to step up their quality and bring that back up so that they can be in competition with something that costs a 10th of the price. That's unfortunate, but it's just true. The next brand I want to talk about is Latafa. In my mind, the way I think of Latafa is the most insane value for quality. They might actually be the highest quality clones that you can get, or at least the ones that I've got, but they are also some of the cheapest. So they're kind of the most continually shocking, I feel like, award. A great example of that is their clone, which I think is now discontinued, but it'll be coming back in a different bottle. Their clone of Tom Ford's Tuscan leather. Um, <sighs> As you can see, they just straight ripped off every aspect of the, the presentation. So, by my metrics, if this isn't a very good clone, I would rock it. And it's spot on, as far as I can tell. They nailed this one. Absolutely gorgeous. For $20, and it performs. It lasts twice as long as the Rosasi La, La Yuka One Pour Ohm, that's the same kind of clone. It lasts like twice as long, and it's like half or a third the price of that clone. How do you beat that? All right, just to hit on a couple more bangers from Latafa, um, just as examples, uh, I'm gonna hit on uh, Oud for Glory, which is another one that everyone knows about, is a clone of Oud for Greatness. 
This is another situation where I hold Latafa to a high standard because they are so blatant about it. I kind of wish more often that they would take a different approach, maybe go with a, something a little bit more unique, but it's hard when they make them like this and then it's so close, if not spot on to the original. They did it, they did the job, so I guess they've earned it. Although I'm surprised that the Tom Fords would be discontinued, but this wouldn't, probably because I'm gonna guess that's just because Tom Ford is more litigious, like the, the company is more litigious than Initio, though maybe Initio's new or owners will be. That one, the other one is Comra, which has obviously been talked about a lot. That's a clone of Angel Share by Killian. Bye bye Killian, bye bye Killian. Do you say bye bye Killian? And um, <laughs> this one is, <laughs> this is one of the best performers that I have. It'll last all day and then some. Uh, rich dried fruits. I love the way this smells. It's one of my favorite fall winter fragrances and it's like 40 bucks. They they just charge nothing. Like their their prices are so low and the quality is so high. <sighs> Even if you want to support the artist, it's like okay, can you guys meet me a little, like meet me, don't meet me halfway. I understand you can't meet me halfway, but like meet me some of the way. Instead, they're raising their prices and these guys are coming out with stuff that's like a fraction. Oh, what am I supposed to do? They're really good. Another house I wanted to showcase uh, is actually Paris Corner and specifically their Amir line, which I have two from. One of them is Sadrat Essence, which is their clone of Sudrat Boise by Mansara. The other one is Amir Vibrant Spicy Tobacco, which is their clone of Byredo's uh, Tobacco Mandarin. And I've been talking about this one recently because I am obsessed with this and the original. I only have two from this house, but they are some of my favorites and I'll tell you why. I think something that, in my experience, these guys do so far is they don't do a one-to-one -one, and they're not really doing a twist, but they get the vibe right. So if you, if you put these next to each other, um, you'll be able to tell the differences between the two of them. However, that doesn't mean that these smell cheap or bad. They don't, they just smell slightly different, but the vibe feels the same. And in the case of Sadrat Essence, I actually, <laughs> actually prefer this over Sadrat Boise um, because for me, I find the woods in Sadrat Boise to be kind of uninteresting, but I really like the creamy, citrus opening that this has and that's basically what this is the whole way through it's a beautiful scent and i love that they kind of just really emphasize that opening and make that the star of the show i, I like that a lot likewise this is different from the original in that um it dials down the mandarin a little bit it dials down the cumin it amps up the the tobacco it amps up the leather it makes it a little bit dirtier smokier uh, it's interesting but in the end in the air it feels very similar to the original. So both of these do a great job of scratching that itch. They both smell really great, both very inexpensive. Uh, in the case of this one, um, I got this because uh, it was like $30, $30, mainly to figure out if I liked the DNA of Sudrop Boise. And then I got a sample of Sudrop Boise and didn't really like it that much, but I really like this a lot. So, and in the case of this one, <laughs> This is great, but it's a placeholder. I do eventually want to get the Byredo just because I think it's on a different level. But this is an absolutely, incredibly well done uh, vibe clone. Okay, now I want to talk to you about a different kind of thing here. I'm going to talk to you about clones of Raja Parfum's Elysium. Uh, and this specifically the Parfum Cologne version because I think that's what's getting cloned a lot. This was released in 2018. I believe it is still the best seller for the house and there's a reason why. This is one of the most immediately attractive and enticing DNAs that you've ever smelled. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this stuff. So I'm going to talk about the clones that I have of it, but I think I really only have one clone of it. I have one clone and then I think I have two inspired buys. Let's get the bat out of the way. Uh, straight off the bat, that is Imperium by Fragrance World. This one gets sung about a lot. And here's what I want to say about this one. Don't get it. This almost ruined Elysium for me. Um, I knew I was going to get Elysium. 
it was just a matter of time. I was waiting for someone to have it on sale or something like that, so I wasn't going full freight. And so I was like, okay, well, $24, let's pick this stuff up, see if it holds up. And on first blush, it does. Like, like first first time you smell it, you kind of go, oh yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, it, uh, it is, it is. And it's like kind of surprising and stuff like that. But after like 30 seconds, there's this like kind of bad breath vibe th from it. And it also lasts only about 30 minutes on my skin. And this is one of those clones that actually made me start thinking about clones in general, because it made me feel so bad. It is such a, obvious ripoff um, in the style wise and then it does this thing where it kind of reaches towards the DNA of what it's cloning and misses it in such a way that it feels kind of insulting um, what do you expect it's twenty dollars sure but Latafa does it so like that's my thing is if Armoff and Latafa can make these incredible quality clones that are like obviously high quality for a really inexpensive price then these guys who are also in the UAE don't have an excuse either and um, you know that's part of my other problem with this is like it's clear the, the the glass is garbage it's got lots of little bubbles in it so there's like they're ripping off the presentation but it's an obviously cheap version of the presentation I don't like this one it makes me feel bad I never wear it honestly getting this uh, bumped up my timeline to get Elysium because it made me feel bad all right, next up is another one that people compare to Elysium a lot. I don't think it's a clone. Um, I don't even think it's a twist. That's Hugo Reversed. This one came out late teens as well. And I see why people would say that it's like Elysium. To me, this is like Elysium's distant, distant cousin. Uh, there's like a, a small bit of resemblance, but beyond that, it's not really a thing. I would say, even if you like Elysium, even if you have Elysium, you should get this because this is just a great scent, especially in the summertime. This is one of the best gym scents. It's just a kind of one of those, it also smells like otherworldly citruses. I think that's kind of the thing that Elysium has is you can't figure out, it smells fruity, it smells tropical, but it's hard to figure out what it is exactly you're smelling. And that's the same thing here. Um, this is maybe the more aroma chemically synthetic version of that it's still beautiful so I like this because I think it's probably realistic to say that this took inspiration from from Elysium but it is very much doing its own thing I don't think that this is a clone and I don't think anyone could be accused of ripping Elysium off uh, with this scent profile <sighs> finally the one that I do think is it's not a clone but I think it's a twist is Mercedes-Benz for men silver I have a running conspiracy theory with this line that I still have to get the other ones in the line to figure out if they're true or not, but um, at least with this one and with the original, I think there are auto-related notes. So in the original, uh, I kind of got the impression that they have a petroleum note there, which makes sense. And in this one, it kind of strikes me like car grease. Um, so for me, this, this to me smells kind of like Elysium with car grease on top of it which seems fitting for Mercedes-Benz. Um, you're trying to have, you know, something, a, a nice, you know, more expensive vehicle, and you want to portray the elegance of something like a Roger, uh fragrance. So you take that, but then you add the car element of adding grease onto it. I think that's fun. So someone else has to have smelled this. Tell me if you think that it smells similar. I think it smells pretty similar, but there is kind of a grease note on top of it, which I think is fun and interesting. And, uh, but I haven't heard anyone else comment on it. I haven't heard anyone else talk about this fragrance at all. So I need someone else to tell me if I'm crazy. <laughs> I will round out uh, the video here by talking about one final clone, which is a twist. And that's Ariana Grande's Cloud. I've talked about this in another video, but this is a, I'm going to say it's inspired by Baccarat Rouge 540. And it adds some sweetness and some uh, I think whipped cream on top of that and I think what this does that is fun is it takes the BR540 DNA and it makes it a little bit more youthful by adding the creamy whipped cream note, the sweet whipped cream. It's this delicious fragrance, it's very inviting, it's very warm and um, I just think it was really well done. The quality on this is great. Uh, you don't expect that from, uh, from a celebrity fragrance but uh, this is really smells great. So if you see this one, uh, I say pick it up. Um, it's a lot cheaper than BR540, but you get a lot of the same vibe from it.
Anyway, I hope you found this uh, discussion interesting. Let me know your thoughts and stay tuned for a little bonus talk after the credits. Bye. So to round things out, I want to talk a little bit about some some uh, drama in the fragrance community. That surrounds Mont Blanc and Creed, starting with Individual. So Individual is a fragrance that uh, Mont Blanc released, and it's a great smelling fragrance. It's uh, sandalwood based. To me, it comes across as just a really clean fragrance. This is like if you want to smell like clean laundry, that's kind of what this one is for. So they released this and allegedly Creed liked it and copied it and released that fragrance under the name uh, Santal or Original Santal. And that ticked off uh, Mont Blanc. So they went and looked at Creed's line, saw uh, their most famous and most popular fragrance, which is called Aventus, cloned that one, and uh, that's how we got Mont Blanc Explorer which is one of the best selling designer fragrances in the world today. So, a little tit for tat, but it's interesting because all those fragrances are notable. Individual, original, or Santal Original, Aventus, and of course, uh, Explore, all pretty famous, but it comes from these two big companies going back and forth. Anyway, I find that interesting, hope you did too. Uh, see you next week, bye.